I'm Terry Burton and this is Pointer Pack News. Hi, my name's Cadence and I'm thankful for ASL. Ready? Say thank you. <laughs> I'm thankful for uh, the opportunity to be here every day at Van Buren High School. I'm thankful that I survived my car wreck. Well, what I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for, for my guys, my family. This year, I'm super thankful for my family. Thankful for uh, this beautiful weather that we've been able to have these last couple weeks. I'm thankful for my family. For uh, being able to come out to school, go out during these uh, uncertain times. My family, my friends, and Jesus. Just pizza. Thankful for family, friends, sports, and everything I have today. For Van Buren, Cheer Van Buren High School, God, and my family. And I'm thankful for my family and the fact that we're able to have a season this year. Friends, family, and sports. I'm Hanson, and I'm thankful for my friends and family. Thankful for my friends, family, and amazing dance coach. For friends, family, and sports. I'm thankful for my family and for my cheer team. Uh, I'm thankful for my friends, my family, and my health. For my family, friends, and football. This year, I am so thankful for my family. I don't know what I would do without them. I'm thankful for seeing all these kids. I'm thankful for seeing our players every day. I'm thankful for our community. I'm thankful for the administration, for all of it. I am thankful that I live in the greatest country in the world. For this country and the wonderful things that we have the privilege to do here. And I'm thankful for the people that, that keep up the good work. I'm most thankful for Brandon Miller and his weather uh, updates weekly. I'm thankful for the ability to actually be able to play basketball still even though we have corona and the football team because we're actually in the second round for the first time in a while. Friends, family, and the fact that we're still in school right now. I'm thankful for uh, the giving season. For my work family and all of you here at school. For my sixth period class. I'm very thankful for the person I have become throughout these years. I'm thankful for my family and friends, my dogs, Chick-fil-A. And I'm also thankful for my beautiful family. Um, I love my students. I love uh, VBHS. I love being here. I'm thankful for my friends and for my family. For cheer, family, VBHS, and God. For my family and friends. For the medical workers out there that have been keeping this pandemic under control. I'm thankful for my friends in this wonderful quarantine Thanksgiving. I am thankful that we got to have a marching season. I'm thankful for friends, family, and sports. Hi, I'm Maddie, and I am thankful for my cats. And I'm super thankful for you. <laughs> what are you thankful for? Good morning, VVHS. We hope all is well with you. This year's talent show will be a virtual one. The bad news, it's virtual. The good news, however, is that it may be really cool. You have from now until January 8th to submit your act in video format. The overall winner will be chosen from a group of VB community members who have promised to stay objective. But there will be voting opportunity for students to pick a crowd favorite. The talent show is normally a pay to get in kind of thing, but since it's virtual, it won't cost a thing to submit an act or view the show. We're setting it up so that we can watch it on an event bell schedule. The top acts will be put into a compilation video and shown to the entire school on the last Friday in January. Ms. Hurst has sent out a form to each student's email. You can also go here to sign up. We've started the countdown. Things can be break starts next week. We will like to say that it starts tomorrow, but don't forget about Monday and Tuesday being virtual learning days. Check with your teachers about what this will look like in each class. Christmas break is in 28 days. 2020 ends in 42 days, and I'm so ready for the new year. And now on to your weekend weather with Brandon. What's up, everybody? It's Brandon Miller back here with some more Pointer Pack News weather. Hope you're having a great Friday out there. Good luck to the Pointers tonight as they play on the road at Marion. As we look at the game time temperatures, we are going to be in the upper 60s, and it should remain clear throughout the game. Good luck, Pointers. As we look at the weekend weather back here in Van Buren, Saturday we're going to be seeing some clouds with temperatures near 70. As we look at Sunday, we're most likely going to be seeing some rain out there, so that may affect your Sunday plans with high temperatures struggling to get to 60. As we look at next week's weather, we're going to be seeing small rain chances pretty much every day next week with the greatest rain chances coming on Tuesday and Friday. So overall, it looks like the best chance to go hit up that park may be on Saturday. As we look at the world weather picture, there's yet another hurricane. This time it's called Hurricane Iota. At least six people have died in Nicaragua, and 60,000 plus have been evacuated from this hurricane. On a brighter note, those pointers are cakewalking all the way to the semifinals. Go pointers. I'm Brandon Miller, signing off.
I'm Tanner, and I'm Sam, and this is Pointer Pack News Sports. Our Pointers won big Friday against Jonesboro, winning 37 to 14. We now move on to round two of the playoffs to face Marion. Uh, watch it live on Pointer Media. If our Pointers win tonight, you know what that means. Next Friday, we get Greenwood again. If that's the case, we play at Greenwood next Friday, and we expect everyone to go. I'm Sam. And I'm Tanner. Now on to next week's sports with Brandon and Kyle. What's up, you goofy goobers? We're bringing that energy back because it's time for next week's sports with Brandon and Kyle. Basketball season is here. As mentioned last week, the Green and White game happened last Saturday. Shout out to the Van Buren White team. I was on that team. We got the 43-42 to victory. Come support both the boys and the girls basketball teams next Tuesday as they kick off the regular season at home against Southside. Go dogs! Last weekend, Arkansas is coming off an embarrassing loss against Florida, almost being a 30-point blowout. But tomorrow they can get the redemption as they're playing for the battle of, of the, the Golden, Golden Boot. Boot. This has been next week's sports with Brandon and Kyle. Hopefully next week we'll be talking about how those pointers got that dub. Let's go, pointers! Go home. Last Saturday, Washington was in disarray, and not many people know about it. President Trump supporters celebrated in Washington this Saturday to rally behind the idea that the election wasn't over. Soon, as the sun set, opposing groups of BLM and Antifa showed up, and the mood shifted. One of which groups refusing to accept what the rest of the country now considers a fact. Counter-protesters triggered mayhem by stealing hats and flags, and by 8 p.m., violence had broken out. We're pretty far removed from hearing about this in the mainstream media, but a few of us have been watching some coverage from a freelance journalist, George Ventura. Check out his Instagram for more information. Be warned though, some of the videos from this weekend are violent and hard to watch. In big COVID news, Europe is shutting down, and the shutdowns are continuing to knock on our own doors. Certain states have already begun to process and prepare for wave three. Last week, Pfizer said its COVID-19 vaccine was over 90% effective in late-stage clinical trials. Over a three-week period, researchers have administrated two vaccine doses to 43,538 volunteers. Around half have received the vaccine, the other half received a placebo. Across all participants, Pfizer logged 94 total COVID-19 cases. There was a 90% effectiveness rate for the vaccinated group. There were some side effects, but it doesn't look any worse than a flu shot. Quick disclaimer, results have been peer-reviewed, and the study is still ongoing. Pfizer will up after reaching 164 positive cases. We don't know if the vaccine prevents asymptomatic transmission or severe COVID cases that cause hospitalization. The FDA needs follow-up data to make sure Pfizer's vaccine isn't making participants grow a tail. Pfizer says it can produce 50 million doses by the end of 2020 and 1.3 billion by 2021, which cuts those numbers in half, or how many people may actually receive it. The U.S. would need 375 million doses to cover 75% of the adult population. The government has already secured 100 million for $2 billion. But here's the big picture. If the shot gets FDA approval and has a high rate of success, more folks are likely to get it. The more they get the shot, the more financial matters get involved with government spending. Think about it. Pfizer isn't the only one with a vaccine hitting the U.S. Moderna has just announced their 94.5% effective vaccine. With 30,000 people involved, half of which received two doses four weeks apart, the other ones received dummy doses. It expects to have 20 million doses available in the country. How do the vaccines compare? Both vaccines use the same approach of injecting parts of the virus's genetic code to provoke an immune response. The preliminary data that we've seen so far is very similar. It's got around 90% protection for the Pfizer vaccine and around 95 for Moderna's. Possible updates for the U.S. shift. Lael Brainyard, a federal governor, is rumored to becoming Joe Biden's Treasury Secretary and pick. As a Harvard PhD advisor to former presidents and a global diplomat, she joined the Federal Reserve in 2014 and has won praise since then. She's considerably a moderate pick, meaning she doesn't upset anyone too much. If she does get picked, she'll be the first woman to ever head the Treasury. This role will be the top economic advisor to the president, responsible for steering the U.S. out of recession and crafting stimulus bills. And we'll keep you all updated on any political changes. More in the U.S., the 2010 health care bill, a.k.a. Obamacare, is facing the Supreme Court once again. California versus Texas center around the individual mandate, an ACA provision requiring Americans to get health insurance or pay $695 plus in taxes. We'll try to simplify. In 2012, Congress reduced the tax penalty to zero dollars, but that isn't even a tax, so it's gone back to court because why even have this if no tax is required? Texas is requesting the ACA be deleted altogether. 
It's controversial enough the fact that the ACA is removed without a replacement. An estimated 20 million people could lose health insurance, and roughly 135 million folks with pre-existing conditions could lose protection. Something no one wants. As of last week, it's looking like nothing will really change and the act will stay in place. More on bills, TikTok is under fire again where they were granted a 15-day extension by the Trump administration to solidify an agreement with an American buyer. For some more casual news, vegetarians let's celebrate. McDonald's has joined Burger King in introducing a meatless burger to the menu but they really missed the mark by calling it the McPlant. We suggest calling it the McMeatless. Canadian pop star of the weekend will perform at next year's Super Bowl halftime show, the NFL said. Also news, if you didn't know, he's from Canada. Scientists from McGill University, York University, and the Indian Institute of Science Education have found a scorching hot planet light years away where oceans are made of molten lava and winds reach supersonic speeds. While we're talking about the sky, SpaceX is set to ship off its next Dragon spacecraft named Resilience. It's said that possibly as soon as next year, anyone, not just trained astronauts, can board these crafts and fly the skies. You can watch the live stream blast off at 727 Eastern Time on Sunday night. Kim Inge has just became the first female baseball executive to be the general manager of the MLB's Miami Marlins and the first female GM in any of the major North American men's sports leagues. After 30 years working in the MLB, she was promoted by Derek Jeter. Turkmenistan president unveiled a 19-foot-tall dog, sculptured his honor of his favorite breed, Central Asian Shepherd. We love dogs too, President Jerbang Goli. You saw me on the intro earlier today. I just want to tell you that Buying trendy clothing can really be a lot of fun, but it can be really expensive, especially when last year's cute outfit just went out of style. So investing a few extra dollars now on a classic article of clothing, like this 25-year-old pointer sweatshirt, for example, can actually save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars over the course of several years, and it reduces waste in our landfills. So next time you think about buying holy jeans or really super expensive tennis shoes, think, will it be in style in five years? I could save my money for something quality that never goes out of style. Episode this week, friends. Stay hydrated, stay healthy, stay humble. See you again next week. <laughs> that looks so Get it, I guess. Oh, Lord. This up, wait a minute. My boy. Show them Oh, hey, I want to see you there. <laughs> the golden Not that, but it's all good. I want energy. Weekend weather. Uh, and I'm Tanner. With a lengthy, lengthy, <laughs> with a, you know, I got it. Okay, we're just, mm. So sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm really sorry. The best. <laughs> Go! Okay, Modder, thank you. Ah! What? Oh. Little bit of candy, <laughs> <laughs>